Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. This is part two of our look at the Octurian Anthology, which I'm so, so, so super, super excited about. I'm trying to light my sage right now. Um, you're going to hear some banging and some yelling, possibly, in the background. That is the construction workers. And if you've been here for a while, you know that for a while now, I have had literally 10 foot 10 feet outside of my window, they are building a high rise. There used to be a restaurant there and now they've torn down the restaurant and they're building a high rise. This construction company is a piece of shit. I've lived in London, England. I've lived in Los Angeles, California. And of course I'm from Atlanta. Uh, I've never in my life, I've dealt with construction in cities before, but I've never in my life dealt with a construction company quite like this before. And before we get into it, just gonna call on Magdalene, Yeshua, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Hathor, who I now know I have a soul imprint from Hathor, calling her in. All of my beings that are around me of the highest good, the highest light that are here to protect and guide, I ask that you come into this recording now. Help me say the words that I need to say. Please keep the equipment protected. Please keep the internet stable. I ask that if there are any nefarious beings, that are not here for my highest good or wish to um, interfere with the knowledge being spread on this channel, that you will escort them out. I do not consent and I revoke, revoke any permission that the darkness thinks it has to use my wounds as an entry point into this. You gotta go. You can't be here. So thank you so much. Anyway, speaking of nefarious beings, Literally, this construction company is a piece of shit. And I'm, I got to the point where I'm almost considering saying what company they are because the shit that they've done to us, they try to block us from getting into our building, which they can't do. That's against the law. Um, twice now I've had to threaten to call the cops because they wouldn't let me into my house. And I, had a do I have a dog here. You know, what if I had a kid here? And so twice I've had to tell them that I will call the Atlanta Police Department if they do not allow me into my house, that they are breaking the law. One of my neighbors had to do the same thing because they tried to block her from coming in, and she actually did call the cops. Um, two of my neighbors have gone to the city commission to file complaints because they, um, on Saturdays, they're not supposed to start working until like 9 o'clock in the morning, and they've been starting at 7. During the weekdays, they're supposed to be finished up by like 8, I believe, but they've been going till 10. Um, multiple times now people have had their uh, paintings, their computers, their TVs fall off the wall because of the aggressiveness of the uh, of what's happening. And we know we know they're doing it intentionally and this is how this is why we know they're doing it intentionally. The property that I'm on, I live in a very expensive, very nice part of Atlanta. Like I am right in the city center. I'm in the heart of Atlanta. And but this building that I live in, this property is very, very old. Like my apartment is very old. Um, and because of that, it's affordable, right? And a lot of people that live here are the same way. Like we like being in this area, but this is a very affordable property. And the guy who owns the property has never, he's been, you know, construction companies have tried to buy the property. And he won't sell. He just likes having us here. But the people who bought the restaurant, the construction company, they're trying to get us, the tenants, to leave this property so that our landlord has no choice but to sell. So they're doing things intentionally to mess with the tenants, which to me, that's some evil shit. I mean, if you've been following me on the other channels that I go on, we do live shows, there have been occasions where I've gotten, my internet just gets cut. And I get popped off the show. There are other people that live in this building with me that work from home. They've lost jobs because of the shit that this construction worker workers are doing. And I know that a lot of my neighbors are filing complaints all left, right, and center because that's not fair to us. That's not fair to the tenants. Just because our landlord won't sell you this property, you're trying to push us out. Like that is some evil, evil, evil shit. Like evil shit. And you're getting your employees to intentionally bully us? God, I would hate to be in your shoes when the reckoning is upon us. That is some fucking evil shit. I know some of my 
neighbors are contemplating filing lawsuits against this company because of jobs lost. And I'm telling you guys, I've lived in Los Angeles. I've lived in London. I've lived in Atlanta. I'm used to construction workers being next door. And yes, it's annoying. But usually when they're doing construction next door, it's it's livable. They don't do things intentionally to bother you. They don't try to stop you from coming into your house. They don't intentionally cut your internet. They don't do those types of things. And if they do do something where a TV falls off the wall or you know something breaks, they usually will reimburse the person. I'm telling you, I'm really considering outing this company's name because you don't want to go into business with these people. And that's one thing I think the owners of this company forget. They don't know who we are. They don't know who the tenants are that live here. They don't know that I, I'm a public figure that has a big platform. It just it goes without say, just always do the right thing. Just always be kind and do the right thing. And shame on you to the employees for going along with this shit. To the employees, it doesn't matter to you whether this property is bought or not. You just get paid by the hour. Why are you going along with this? Anyway, so to make a long story short, if you hear banging and shouting, it's the construction workers. So this is part two of our Arcturian anthology. And I am so, 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 so excited to go deeper into this. We're starting with the section in the beginning. And if you missed part one, I will put that in the description box below. Ektara says, when you move with power, you affect reality. In the beginning. In the beginning by Judy Sion, who is Tom Kenyon's girlfriend. My own mind is my own church. All national institutions of churches, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear to be no other than human inventions set up to terrify and enslave mankind and monopolize power and profits. Touche. I agree. Thomas Paine, The Age of Reason. I grew up questioning religion. It seemed patently absurd to me even as a very young child. The whole notion actually wasn't just absurd. It was insulting to intelligence, logic, reason, and freedom of thought. I grew up reading and rereading Thomas Paine's An Age of Reason, as due to some odd blessing of fate, it was one of only two books left in the bathroom by some great guiding hand, certainly not my mother's. His logic seemed irrefutable to me, though I have come to differ with him on one key point, upon which I will not elaborate here, because each of us may, must make that final determination in the quiet of our own minded heart. By the time I was old enough to comprehend Thomas Paine, I had already observed, experienced, and come to despise the system used to control our thinking and our actions. In the South, where I grew up, same, behavior was enforced by the application of shame and guilt. These remarkable control agents are a system of torture of the mind and heart devised by parents and other authority figures who themselves were right, likely raised the same way or who could not believe humankind capable of being good for goodness sake. So the fear of God was invoked and instilled. How do you end a cycle so firmly and insidiously set? Ultimately, most of us are broken and eventually we accept the bit in the mouth and the blinders over our face. We don't see beyond what we have been told exist. We become pack horses for other people's beliefs, and most of us carry that load someone else put on us for the rest of our lives. If I had experienced the people who so firmly believed in religion as peons of virtue, perhaps I might have lingered longer at the fountain of dogma. But my experience was that those who preach to others did not live what they preach. And that includes some of the most famous television evangelists I have had the displeasure of knowing. They preach a doctrine they do not live. And I cannot tolerate that. Hello, Hillsong. 
y'all i'm thinking about doing a deep do- dive into hillsong because a huge documentary was just released about hillsong and i know i've talked about it on the dark outpost before but holy shit if you don't know the church is satanic dig into hillsong i have never tolerated fools or hypocrites very well besides i had other experiences as a child growing up as i did in the middle of nowhere i cannot claim even a small town not a hamlet not even a village i grew up in the middle of nothing in the tobacco plains of virginia there was no other child for over 10 miles in any direction I had friends in the wind and the forest spoke to me until I was told that it couldn't. And I will say, if you missed Judy's full story, she does write about it in Magdalene Manuscript. That is in this playlist, which I will include in the description box below so you can hear Judy's full story of her childhood. One night, as I lay down in the bed, three glowing orbs appeared at the foot of my bed. I told that story in the Magdalene Manuscript, as I just said, so I will only mention the significance here because it's hard to believe the party line when you've had other personal experiences. I was always interested in the paranormal, so it wasn't the possibility of things beyond our understanding that confused me. It was the subject of God that always made me squirm. Who's God? What would God have to be jealous of? Why would there be knowledge that this God did not want his children to possess? And why on earth would a woman be blamed for wanting wisdom and eating an apple? If there is a metaphor in this, it's lost on me. And there is the issue of fairness and excess. Why would a child in some far off country be made to burn in hell for eternity because he or she does not have access to the teachings of Jesus Christ. It's the same thing I asked when I was a kid. That is the message of evangelical Christianity and the excuse for missionaries to intrude their belief systems onto others. Yeah, Christianity is super violent. Like it is textbook, one of the most violent religions. It is not the religion of peace. It is, it's got more blood on his hands than Satanism does. That's, that speaks volumes. I'd say it's actually embarrassing. Like the more that I learn about Christianity, the more I'm mortified that that was the religion my parents raised me in. Like I am mortified by that. And I look at people who still cling to the Bible. I'm like, does this not embarrass you? Does it not embarrass you that you are worshiping a God that demands burnt virginal offerings that it says in your Bible? What is that? That's a child sacrifice. Does it not embarrass you that you're worshiping a God that demands a blood sacrifice as in Jesus? And are you are you that deep in a cognitive dissonance that you don't understand that you are worshiping Lucifer in your churches? Lucifer is the God of the Bible. Make no mistake about that. The evidence is everywhere. If you are going to church, I don't care how nice your pastor is. You're worshiping Lucifer and you're putting money into the cabal. Wake up. Wake up. And I agree with her. It's, it, it's, it's, it's awful. It's horrible what this religion has done. What about the, the actual things that these Protestant way showers said about women that we looked in and at at the return of the divine sophia i mean for all this time i've been thinking yeah the methodists are pretty cool the methodists are pretty laid back nope the guy who started the methodist church didn't think women had souls he believed that when we were past our birthing years when we went into menopause that we needed to be taken out back and put down I don't even think you should do that to an animal. So you're just blindly following because that's what your parents did. That's what your grandparents did. Well, as they said when we were kids, if your friends all jumped off a cliff, would you do it too? Wake up. Christianity is Satanism. If you are a Christian, you are practicing Satanism. No different than the controllers. Why can't any child live an exemplary life 
of honor by choice, not fear, and retire to a dimension of plenty rather than burning in the damnation because they never heard about Jesus and the name Jesus, as we know, means Hail Satan. The J-Cell did not exist back then. The real name was Yeshua, which does not translate to Jesus. People are like, oh, it translates. No, it doesn't. If you replace the J with the Y in the name Yeshua, that does not equal Jesus. Replace the J with the Y. Let's sound it out together. Yeshua. Now let's put a J in there. Joshua. Josh. Joshua is Yeshua. Jesus means Hail Satan. The story of Jesus was con- created by the controllers. Yeshua or Joshua bin Yosef was never crucified because the real God, source creator, does not demand human sacrifice. The real God does not demand blood rituals. The real God does not condone cannibalism and the drinking of blood, which is what communion is. Get it in your head. Let's really think about this, you guys. It's common sense. And I know common sense ain't that common. We can't, I mean, this is tough love. What you are doing at your church on Sunday is no different than what they were doing on those islands. Judge not, lest ye be judged. That's in the Bible. Why do you think it's in the Bible? Because you are no different from them. You are doing the exact same religious practices that they were doing on those islands. Wake up. Wake up. Okay. What a kind of love of loving creator blows. What kind of loving creator blows up entire cities, killing everyone? Exactly. I am reminded of the French Catholic bishop who, when he was asked why he was setting fire to a church full of both good Catholics and what he was considered a Cathar heretic, said, let them all burn. God will know his own. Let them all burn. What kind of God needs his creation to be willing to take the life of their own offspring to prove their love for him? That's what I just said. Let me read that in the back for those who didn't hear. What kind of a God needs his own creations to be willing to take the life of their own offspring to prove their love for him? That's a burnt virginal offering. That's a child sacrifice. Wake up. Wake up. That Bible that you venerate as holy is the words of Lucifer. You are no different from the cabal if you are still venerating that piece of shit Bible. The real God, the real God does not require this. Sorry, this makes me so fucking mad. I cannot believe how duped my own ancestors were. Like, how is this acceptable? It's not acceptable. It's not. We don't kill people. We don't do sacrifices. That's not what we do on the side of good. As a... Any psychotherapist I know would not give a very healthy diagnosis to such a paranoid, arrogant, hubristic, and narcissistic creature with multiple personality disorder. My life is a biological fact, not a theological fact. Don't get me wrong. I tried to believe in God. Then after many years of struggling with the notion, I managed to accept that metaphysical option. We're all God. But still I searched. I read and I disassociated myself from the small town and the small minds that tried so hard to tell me what to believe. I have never stopped hunting for answers, searching for the puzzle pieces that would answer fundamental questions that haunted me. Why do we need to worship? 
Why do we bow down to misguided authority? Why do we call some beings masters? What does that make us? What in us makes us so quick to fall into line and allow slavery of the soul and the body? Why, when someone says God, do we think male and see an old bearded man and automatically go into prayer position, which inevitably means we bow down and think less of ourselves? There was a missing piece of the puzzle of information, just like the missing link of our understanding of the biology of mankind. The missing link. I left a successful consulting business in 1986 to come to a small island in the Northwest because I wanted to create a book about soulmates. Instead, I wound up editing two channeled books I called Last Waltz of the Tyrants and UFOs and the Nature of Reality. It was my first incursion into alien territory in an alternative creation story. It took me two years walking in the wind at the edge of the ocean to pull it all in place in my own sphere of logic and of believability and come to terms with what the possibility of such a creation story might mean. After two years, it was as if someone had taken a bolt cutter to my mind. Finally, after two years, the potential of humanity began to result began the result of genetic manipulation by an intergalactic civilization made a lot more sense the story of some old bearded man in a missing rib if you can read this octarian information with an open mind it could free you as long as we give our power away to some higher authority we lower ourselves let me share with you the creation story as it was given to us by the octarians and a number of other beings as well they are not the first to tell this story but there are new gifts in the Octarian version, which we are delighted to share with you and hope that it loosens the binders and may, that may bridle you and cripple your sight. Eons ago, a race of intergalactic, technologically advanced beings called the Anunnaki realized their atmosphere was disintegrating and their scientists determined that gold would stabilize it and a scan of our planet showed immense deposits of gold i've heard this this actually is a story i've heard too they came to earth to mine the gold in africa hence a science was determined africa is the cradle of the current civilization because it was in africa that the anunnaki anunnaki genetic scientists mixed the brew of which we were made Earth's rotation made it difficult for the Anunnaki to stay here for so for many long periods, and their people did not, didn't want to do the hard work of mining, so they looked for a solution for how to mine the gold for their atmosphere without using their own people. And their solution was the creation of the Homo sapiens. Now, I am going to say this because I've said this before with Tom Kenyon as far as other channeled books. We know a lot more now, factually now, than they did when they were channeling this book, okay? So when somebody is channeling, the channeler is always receiving the message through the perception of what the channeler knows. So we now know, if we're looking at Tartaria, that human beings did not, civilization did not start in Africa. We now know that the Fertile Crescent is here in the Americas. We also know that race does not come from evolution of of geography but more intergalactic dna okay so i didn't my skin didn't turn white because my ancestors moved to europe my skin is white because i carry mostly palladian lyran and octurian dna right same black people are more ser serious that they're more the serious constellation yeah so i i want and as far as the rotation of the axis like we don't really know for sure what's true anymore when it comes to that so i just want to make that very clear that there can be a level of grace given with error and channeling because when tom kenyon was channeling this i'm sure like all of us he believed what we had been told in school all right so he's he's it He's claiming the information through the filter of what he knows. So I hope that makes sense. That's why if anybody knows Tom Kenyon, I'd love to bring him on the show and ask him about, about Tartaria. Right? The clay tablets of early Sumeria tell the story as it was experienced then. Many people have pointed to these early primates as the origin of the human line. But the Acturians added a twist I had never heard before. They talked about higher vibrational beings, which are electromagnetic in nature, called ephemals. Ephemals have always been here, and we used to be able to see them, 
though they vibrate at a much higher level than we do. They are the fairies. Holy shit. That's so crazy that fairies are coming up. You guys know I see I see spirits. And yesterday I was filming this. I'm, I'm, these videos that you're watching, I've filmed way in advance because as you're watch, currently watching this video, I'm actually traveling right now. So I had to film a lot of these in advance. So yesterday I was filming the April read with um, uh, Nicole and Sarah. And an orb kept going by my face all day. This little, I could see it. It was like this little lightning bug. It's like, but it was an orb kept going. I could actually see it, not just in the camera, but with my eyes. Turns out it was one of my fairies. So I'm taking that as definitely a sign. So, hey, fairy. I see you, boo. They were fairies and elves and gnomes in mythology. They still exist. We have been trained not to see them, quite like the supposed story told about the natives who could see Captain Hook's tail ship because they had no frame of reference for them. Some of these ephiral exper experimented with entering the bodies of early primates. But there was a window of time during which they could embody an animal. If they stayed beyond that window, these ephirals became trapped in a primate body. That kind of, though, does match the law of one with the organic portals, right? Like, the or organic portals. And if you missed those videos, I'll put all three parts down in the description box below. The organic portals were the bodies created when our planet was moving from second density to third density. And so the beings on the planet needed third density bodies. So they created these organic portals, these bodies that attracted higher density souls to come into the body, right? So that kind of makes sense what they're saying. And now we've gotten stuck in this like Sam Skark loop, loop of, loop of karma in these bodies. So that, that, that makes sense. Though many intergalactic groups tell the story of the Anunnaki taking their DNA and slicing it with the early primates to create a slave race to mine gold and serve their Anunnaki masters, I have never heard the piece about them choosing specific primates for this experiment, only the primates that were trapped ephemals. And I do believe they have messed with our DNA. Like, I do believe I'm RH negative. I do believe that everybody should actually be RH negative. I think because I don't believe in evolution. I, I used to. And then the Great Awakening happened and I realized we did not come from monkeys. <laughs> so the rhesus factor comes, they, they name it after the rhesus monkey. So people who are RH positive have what they call the rhesus factor in their blood. That's 85% of the human population. I am RH negative. I don't have the rhesus factor in my blood. Um, a lot of the controllers, a lot of the, the powerful families are all RH negative, right? Because RH negatives do tend to be more sensitive to the spiritual side. It is very common for RH negatives to experience a lot of psychedelic stuff. Um, seeing spirits, I've seen spirits. Um, a lot of my boyfriend's also RH negative. He's A negative and he has a lot of abduction stories. Um, so, RH negatives, also the back of our eyes are shaped differently. So you see my eye, my blue eye, through the the, the black center bit go all the way. If you were to like look all the way in the back, my the in the back it's shaped like a diamond. Whereas someone who's RH positive, it's a circle. So that means that I am able to see things other people can't. All RH negatives that have that particular trait where the back of their eye is shaped in a diamond, they call it astigmatism because you see light differently. It's not astigmatism. You're just able to see beyond the dimensions, whereas someone who's RH positive can't. And so I do think that they added the rhesus factor to splice, spliced it in with our DNA to try to take away spiritual gifts. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, it didn't really work because a lot of people who are RH positive do also have spiritual gifts. It's just there's certain there's certain side effects that are definitely RH uh, negative. We like the eye and stuff. So I, I, I do think that potentially in the future, they might be able to remove the rhesus factor. I don't know. Um, I don't want you to freak out if you are RH positive. It's fine. Uh, but I do think that that was one of the times that they messed with our DNA for sure. For sure. According to the Octarians, the Anunnaki specifically chose the primates that were trapped ephirals because they had the physical spark about them that set them apart from those primates. So again, the organic portals, the bodies that were inhabited by sold people. Yeah, the higher beings don't mess with organic portals. They just use them to do their dirty work, but they don't abduct organic portals. They don't attack, physically attack organic portals. They want the, the people that have the spark. 
All right. In other words, they were not just your average monkey. We are not the ecclesiastical creation of some God taking a rib away from Adam to create a woman. We are a scientific experiment. It was genetic tampering, not unlike what we do with horses and breeding now. So alien intervention in the creation of early mankind is the biological missing link. But here's the most important and most dangerous part of the story. I realized it was 20 years ago when I did UFOs and the nature of reality, but I never heard anyone else support my theory until the Octarians. Think about it. What is one of the bedrock understandings of metaphysics? Thought creates. If we were created with the intention of making us a slave race, no wonder we revert to that position when confronted with what might appear to be anything greater than us, God, aliens, with advanced technology. The Anunnaki were a very advanced intergalactic race of beings, very unevolved, but very advanced. That, by the way, was another major issue of my childhood mind. If earlier gods were so great, why were they so ignorant and jealous and dangerous? You can have great power, but not be very evolved. Evolution is a matter of consciousness. Power can be achieved with technology, but because a race of beings has great power, that does not make them great or deserving of servitude. Because of the concept of the early gods, specifically Jehovah, to name one bestial represent representation of someone's notion of God, and we know Jehovah is a demon, could blow up a whole city does not make him sacred or great. It just means he was powerful. I think of Jehovah as an unevolved two-year-old with tremendous power. Well, yeah, if you read the missing books of the Bible, Jehovah is the name of a demon. Sorry, Jehovah's Witnesses. It's okay, Jehovah's Witnesses. All Christians are worshiping demons. So, frankly, I'd rather have consciousness than that kind of power. And I don't choose to fear God. If he or she exists... I would rather respect and love him or her than fear him or her. Any God I honor must deserve respect, not require fear or groveling. So let's go back to the creation story as per the Acturians. So you have early human beings who were the result of genetic inbreeding of the ephirals trapped in the primate bodies and Anunnaki DNA. Hold that thought of creating a slave race. Remember those two years I said I walked at the edge of the ocean in the wind trying to piece together the reasons for a tendency to bow down to even false authorities? I was working on a book about aliens that contained the same information about the Anunnaki, but until I reasoned out, thank you Thomas Paine, that the thought being held when they played with our DNA was that of creating a slave race. It hadn't made sense. I deduced that over 20 years ago, but I had never heard it said by any group or anyone else until now, and I only told a few people my theory. I suspect we're only given information when we're ready to reason it out and accept it. It took me years to make sense of what I was editing then, and that was almost 20 years ago. Thought creates, and the human race was created with the thought of creating a slave race. So for us to take our full power back and realize the potential greatness of who we are requires understanding of how we got here. Service to our masters. This is in our myochondrial DNA. And according to the Octurians, before our die was cast, there, were, there have been over 20 additional genetic tamperings from different civilizations and races of beings. They say this makes us intergalactic royalty to have such a melange of genetic information. I suspect that the saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, also applies to information. When the mind is open, the knowledge will avail itself. I cannot tell you how privileged I feel to introduce you to our Arcturian friends and family in this text. It is my most fervent hope that you can reason your way to at least considering the information contained herein. The truth is, when we were invited to participate in the sharing, Tom didn't want to participate. He has no problem with the concept of Buddha or Saraswati or Master Wu and the various pantheons of many spiritual traditions at all. But the notion of aliens has always left him cold. The spiritual teacher in him could accept the great teachers of many world traditions, but not accept the concept of aliens. He called those sacred beings gods and considered them divine. 
I have banished the word God from my vocabulary and now call them all aliens. To me, every single being believed to be a God was a visitor from another world, possibly another dimension in a galaxy far, far away. Tom has worked with the Hathors for over 20 years now, and I've worked with them through, here, through him for over 15 years. They are truly old friends. But he was very hesitant to step any further out onto the alien limb. But when the subject of this book came up, the one being we respected more than any other asked him to channel to bring through the Actarian material. When this being requests something, we both pay attention. This being was known in her only human life as Mary Magdalene. And now we know, so Judy and Tom, if you hear me, if you watch my video, please stop calling her Mary Magdalene. Mary was a very disrespectful name. Her name was just Magdalene. Just Magdalene. And she is the one who stepped forward and asked Tom to please bring through this material. Because I know the quality of the channeled information is relative to the evolutionary state of the channel. I couldn't imagine any, well, anyone else bringing through Arcturian information at this time because I know the level of integrity in which Tom lives his life. I know his keen intelligence. I respect the scientists in him. And I know he can tune his brain to any frequency and bring in the highest quality information. And I know he hates to do it. But he never turned down a request from the being known as Magdalene. And as it turns out, Magdalene is an Octurian, as in the magnificent being known as Yeshua ben Yosef, along with the many beings referred to as Ascended Masters, Sanat Kumar. They were not just Octurian. They were primarily Lyran. Tom and Judy. They were also shapeshifters. Magdalene could shape into a lion, which is Lyran. But you can be a galactic mixture. I am also Lyran and Apturian and Palladian, but let's just, if we're going to be honest here, if we're going to tell the truth, we need to tell the full truth, okay? They aren't just Octarian. All right. My alien strands. My first conscious experience with the Octarian was in Zimart, Switzerland at the at the gracious and dear friend's apartment, Magdalene suggested we use the time at Zermatt to bring through my lineage. It was my birthday present. As it turns out, I'm not from here. You may not be either. Additionally, many of us carry emanations, energy strands of other beings. In other worlds, many of us are not from these parts. It seems my strands come from the far-flung reaches of space. I was once told you are crossed bread and line bread to be here now i guess that means i'm not really from virginia tom lovingly allowed his consciousness to channel my menagerie several times a week during our visit it was one of the most delicious and greatly appreciated gifts i've ever received i barely remember most of the beings who came through to claim some aspect of my personality but i will never forget the octurian he was bold and deeply intelligent. He was no-nonsense, one of my favorite traits. He shot straight. There was a family in the apartment above us, and as Tom altered his brain state to bring through this being, the people upstairs began to drag furniture around the apartment, making the most horrific noise on the tile floor a few feet above us. The Octurian beamed in to hear those horrible scrape scraping sounds, and his first words were something to the effect what are those idiots doing up there? I almost expected him to go and knock on their door and demand them to be more respectful. I have loved the Octurians ever since. I experienced many other beings in that amazing time in Zermatt, but the Octurians struck a heart chord that hadn't been played for me before. Each of us is a combination of a physical body and a consciousness. The physical body may be created by a mix of DNA from our physical ancestors from a variety of lands on Earth, but the spark that inhabits the body and determines the consciousness may be a mix from many other dimensions and many galaxies. And you may even have an animation of a being who is held as a goddess or an exalted spiritual teacher. But according to Magdalene and the Hathors, the deity himself or herself almost never fully incarnates. Almost never. You may carry a strand of a deity, an emanation, which is why you relate to a particular being or the religion of that deity. But it is highly unlikely that any of us is an incarnation of a deity. 
I suspect our confusion about emanations is the reason why Magdalene discussed the subject in her section. Yeah, I have been told that I have the imprint of Hathor. I've been told that now by two different spiritualists that don't know each other, that never communicated. So I get that. So I have an imprint from Hathor, which makes sense to me. Even though in the Sophia Code, the Hathor section, I was like, this is too mathy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a math person. I don't really like numbers. Like math is too, I'm, I'm very, listen, listen, y'all. When I was in the fourth grade, my fourth grade teacher told my mama that generally speaking, there are two types of people in this world. There are people who think black and white and there are people who think gray. People who think black and white are really good at math and science. They want an exact solid answer. They want an equation. People who are gray thinkers don't need an exact answer. They are good at philosophy. They are good at the arts. They're very artistic. They are good at debating. They're good at speaking. And my fourth grade teacher told my mom that my sister and I were two different thinkers. My sister was black and white thinker. I was a gray thinker. And that because I was a gray thinker, I should not really be pushed to try to excel in things like math because that's just not how my brain worked. And we needed to honor that my brain worked in a, in a, a more gray way. And boy, was she right, because let's be honest, that's what I excel in. I, you know, studied English in school, lit literature, and I went to India and studied philosophy, basically. Like, that is not, and it's, and I, I can, I can entertain very out there ideas, and I don't need a reason why, right? So, so I get that, like, math, so the fact that Hathor is one of my big soul imprints, and she's all about the math, like, literally cracks me up, because, that is not maybe my twin flame is good at math i don't know maybe might be my half of the soul is the the artsy fartsy like philosophy based <laughs> side of the soul and his side of the soul is like math i i don't know i i don't know <laughs> but i just find that funny god does have a sense of humor though so the Octarians clearly wanted to use this opportunity to address issues their civilization was facing. As a backdrop to issues, we must also face the dilemma of the heart versus the mind. They voiced grave concern over our lack of respect for our environment and suggested meditation techniques. They also seemed to be using this opportunity to explain their defense of Earth and to announce that they would be contacting many more people on earth. They tackled one of my favorite subjects, the dangers of religion and mind control, which is rampant today, in my opinion. Power does not equal consciousness. It has been my pleasure and my delight to transcribe what these magnificent beings had to say. I get to hear it firsthand, directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak. We never change a word of what's given, and Tom and I purposely do not read whatever anyone else has written about the beings we work with to be sure that we deliver is, what we deliver is original to us. I'd like to leave you with one last thought as you enter these pages. We are all divine beings with a capacity of greatness that knows no bounds. We have purposely been lied to by the religious and governments and buried in a swamp of shame and servitude. Giving up ignorance does not mean you give up your commitment to evolution and the ascension of your spirit. You do not need to grovel before anyone to ascend and evolve. Looking back, I'd say the issue I have with the UFO community is that they've left out spirit. And the issue I have with the New Age community is that they tend to give their power away. You can be powerful and fully conscious and free. And I agree. I think that's interesting that she talked about. I, I know that we were created to be a That is something I agree with. We were created to be a slave planet, right? Um, by the bad Anunnaki, by the Draco. And so that's interesting, though, that that is in our DNA, to be uh, have a propensity for mind control, right? And I'm not just talking about the people in this world who are getting the zapper de doo -dah and uh, still believe in the event of 2020. I'm not talking about that. I'm, there are people in this this truther community, the seeker community, that are also being mind controlled by witches and warlocks in the truther community that have got their mind enslaved to bondage. So. That's they know that. So the so that's an element that we now learn. The controllers do know that our DNA is programmed for mind control.
So now we have to understand that because knowledge is power, knowledge protects, and we have to move forward and try to understand that we are programmed to buy splicing of our dna to be a slave planet and so that's what we are fighting against our own our own propensities to fall into mind control right so anyway all right you guys i hope you're having a wonderful day and i'll talk to you soon